Hello and welcome to my channel, Making Crafts, and welcome back to Freebie Share Saturday. I have decided that I will do the freebie shares every other week, so I didn't do one last week, and we're going to start doing every other week. And so today's project, we are also going to need our freebie that we print out, as well as some book pages, or magazine pages, or any type of pages like you... Um, I'm trying to think what else you could use. I'm going to be using a dictionary, but you could use any old books that you had. You could use magazines. You could use catalogs. That's what I was trying to think about. If you get catalogs in the mail, the catalogs would work, I would think. So the type of paper that I'm looking for is paper that's um, not, you know, like some old paper that you have in books is, I call crunchy. Like when you fold it in half, it's split. You don't want that. You want pages that is going to... Um, be flexible. So this is this this dictionary is not vintage. I don't think it may be. I'm trying to remember. Um, it was 1991. That may be considered vintage now, but to me, it's not considered old. I have older ones, so I'm not using my older ones right now. But I'm using um, this one. And like I said, the pages are kind of flimsy, but also they're more flexible. And like when I fold these pages, they don't crack or crunch or anything. So that way, it will work for this project. And so. Um, as I go along, I'll explain the project, and then I'll show you the freebies as well. So I'm just going to tear out quite a few of my dictionary pages so we can get started. That way we can go ahead and be gluing and get everything um, glued up to be drying while we work on every, you know, so we can work on it. Because we're going to be adding some paint and different things to it as well. So, we are going to be making a pouch or a large envelope, a large pouch. And this one, I'll give you a sample of one, and that's just gonna be similar to this, but uh, this is just a sample of what we're gonna be making. It's a large envelope to store your digital kits in or any of your junk journal kits. You could, now mine is not large enough to fit 12 by 12 papers, but it is large enough to fit my eight and a half by 11. And you can see my eight and a half by 11 down in here, as well as some of the fussy cuts. Also, I want to have something so when I gather up all the pieces for my junk journal, that, or my journal, that I have um, somewhere to store them for each one. So I'm gonna make several of these up. I wanna have enough so that I can be putting kits together all the time. Cause I'm always coming up with ideas for my journals and I'm always printing out digitals and then just laying them in stacks and I keep stacks everywhere and so what I would like to do is get where I can just have several of these storage envelopes to put them in and then I'll just reuse them you know once I make the journal up then I can reuse them for the next journal as well so mine is I'll get the measurements for my um, envelope pouch in just a second now this was not totally my idea as far as this pouch goes so I saw a video by Joey Defee, Joy Defee, Joy Defee. I can't remember how to say her name now. I think it's Joy Defee. I will link below to her channel because I hopefully I'm not just butchering her name, but um, I can't remember how to say it. But I really enjoy her channel and I saw her make these, but she was using book pages that were large enough to just use the book page for her envelope. I don't have book pages that are large enough or not. I, I had one book, but I really didn't want to use it because it's the one that I fussy cut my flowers out of. So I didn't want to um, waste it. And these are, I have lots of dictionary pages and I thought this would be the perfect thing to use. So what I'm doing is I'll make sure here, I'm just getting the size big enough. I don't want it too big because I don't need, I don't need it but so large because I'm gonna have to trim it down. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking my dictionary pages and I am layering those on top of each other so that I can make a large enough piece to make the envelope. So what, what I saw on her channel, she was using, and I probably do a lot, several things different. I, you know me, when I see something, it's been several weeks since I watched it, but I have the idea, I wanted to try it. So I, I'm not good at just following everything to a T, you know, but I, I really liked her instructions, but I'm sure I'll change things up. But, so like I said, she used a large book page for hers, and I didn't have a large enough book page, so I'm just gluing some pages together. And so I've got these together like this, and this is one layer. But what I wanna do is I want to add several layers so that I am sure that it's not, oops, I hit that cup over there, so that it's nice and thick enough that it's, it's gonna be sturdy enough for my kids. And 
because I'm going to be pulling these in and off the shelf and I want to make sure it is going to be sturdy. So I'm just going to layer up several sheets of dictionary pages and I'm just going to overlap them. So since I had these up and down this way, I'm just going to overlap this one going a different direction. And I just, I'm just going to go through and I've made up some so that we don't have to sit here and do them all. I was just gonna do one with you to show you um, how it is. Plus I also needed this one for part of the envelope because I've made the front and back, but you also have to make a flap and I will show you all. It'll all make sense when I get going. But what I've done with in the for the other one I made and for the papers that I have made up so far, I am just, um, I'm layering up the pages and I'm layering about three layers thick. So I'll, so now we're on our second layer, and then I'll come back and do one more layer just so we have, you know, enough thickness that this is, it's still flexible. I still want it to be very flexible, but at the same time, I um, want it to be good and sturdy. Now, if you are using a thicker pages than dictionary pages, hopefully you have felt dictionary pages before, but if not, um, these are fairly thin, so if you're using thicker pages, like this, like um, kind of like Joy did, that's in an encyclopedia, or it's the slicker pages, then you may not want to layer as many up as I'm doing. These are really thin pages. These are more like, I would compare them to like pages in the Bible. You know how the, they're very thin and um, fragile? That's what these kind of are like. So I wanna make sure that I have them thick enough that um, my envelope's going to be sturdy. So that's why I'm doing three layers. But like I said, if you have thicker pages, you wouldn't. So if I was using even those shiny pages that's in encyclopedias, those would probably be thick enough that you may only use one layer or you could do two layers. So what I'm doing too is I'm just making a big piece here, but I did kind of think about the size that I wanted. So I'm going to make sure that it is large enough to cut my one side of my envelope out. So this one measures 13 and a half by, let's see, 10 and a half. So I'm making sure that, you know, I will have room to cut that out here. And then you also have this flap that you connect. Let me get this down here, this flap that connects. So I am making a piece up. So right now I've already got my front and backs made up for it, but now I'm making a piece big enough for the flap, but you'll be able to make several flaps out of this one piece. So let me see, I've already layered, I'm trying to remember what layers I've done. So this is my third layer here, and here's some. So I'm just gonna add a few more layers, and then we will go ahead and um, cut all the pieces out. So I've added my other sheets on. Oops, this one didn't get enough glue. But what I do is I kind of just go by feel, um, if it feels thick enough for me as to, if you know, how I think my envelope's gonna be. Because you just gotta keep in mind that these are not gonna be super sturdy to put like um, heavy items in, but to put your sheets for your journal and your pockets that you go ahead and make ahead of time, different things like that, I think it'll be fine. So you just wanna kinda think of that though. You don't want it to be super thin, but um, still kinda want it to be flexible. And we are gonna be adding another layer with some paints and, and our digitals. So, um, I think three layers for my paper is good enough, but you just decide for yours how thick you want it. And so I've gone ahead, I have this one that's gonna be drying, and then I have these two that I've already made ahead of time. This one I made way too big, so we're gonna to have to cut down. We're gonna cut them all down, but so I did make some a little bigger than others, but don't worry about that. If you do the same thing, if you make it extra large, your um, pages, if you decide that you're, you're gluing them up and you didn't really think about the size, that's okay because what we cut off, I've already got some cut off from my other envelope I made. They're perfect for tags. And so I'm going to set this one aside to dry while I go ahead and cut down the other two to the size that I need them. Now, when I was gluing mine up, I didn't mention, but I was using Fabri-Tac, but you can use any glue that you have. I was just using Fabri-Tac because lately I'm finding that under these lights, um, my Barely Art Glue and my Art Glitter Glue seems to be drying too quickly and so it will leave lines under the paper. So I've got to figure out what I'm doing wrong or what, how I need to store it so that this doesn't happen anymore. But let's go ahead and cut these down. So I want to cut them down to 10 and a half by, um, let me measure this one again. 
So we want 13 and a half by 10 and a half. So this is going to be 13 and a half. And it is a little too big for my paper trimmer, but that's okay, we'll work through it. We'll get it. If I need to, I can pull out my scissors to cut the cut part of if I need to. That doesn't fit into the trimmer. Okay, so then we need 10 and a half. I'm just gonna go a little bigger than 10 and a half. Well, it is squared up, it should be okay. Okay, so let's go around 10 and a half. Not exactly, but it's gonna be close. So we are gonna have a little struggle here because it's not gonna fit under here. So I'm just going to cut part of the way down. And then I will use my scissors to trim the rest. And this will be my guide. Hopefully I can trim it straight. It doesn't have to be perfect, does it? There we go. And so we're just gonna cut the other one down to 10 and a half by 13 and a half as well. So that's our, so this could either be our front or our back, either way we want it to be. And then this is going to be the other side. So now the digital that we're going to be using is by Artie Mays, and this is her free digital for the month of April. And she offers digitals each month, and she has a store as well with a lot of beautiful printables in it, or digitals in it that you print out. And um, so this is on her Ko-Fi store. I will link below to it, but she also has a Facebook group, and I am in the Facebook group, and you, you can see so many um, projects there that she shares her projects as well as on her YouTube and so it's it's fun to be in a group like that so you can see other people's projects and ideas when they're using a certain designers um, papers so this one's in her Ko-Fi I will link to it and it's a beautiful kit it she well, you'll see she does beautiful work if you've never heard I'm sure you've heard of her before she has quite a following on YouTube and on Facebook and so um, this one she is seven pages, I think, in this kit. And so she has the, you know, you've got the um, taller pages. And so you've got them in the, you know, the blues and the cream color. And then there's a sepia tone for that page. And then she has the landscape pages. And so you have that one in your, in color. And then you have the sepia tone of one of the colored pages. So you have seven pages because then you have labels that you can, little labels and tickets and things that you could use as well. So these would be great to use in a journal. And I saw these and I thought they were so pretty that I wanted to use them on my pouch. And so, so I wanted to use them on my pouch. So um, let's cut those down as well. So what I really liked about these was the, land, the uh, not landscape, excuse me, the um, other pages. I can't think of the term I want to use for these that are just up and down the taller pages. So we're going to cut those and use those on the front of our pouch, and then we'll do something different on the back. So first, I just want to trim the white edges off of these. Now, for my other um, envelope, I tore all the edges off. I tore the white edges off, and then I tore the pages to do this. But after I got done, I liked the looks of it, but I decided I wanted to try it cutting the pages as well and see what that looks like. And I have two different versions, so I'll show you the one that I made tearing the pages when we get done as well. We'll do side by side and see which one we like best. But I, um, I just wanted to give it a try just cutting straight edges. So what I wanna do is I want to cut down the middle here. I don't wanna cut that butterfly wing off, but I just wanna cut Somewhere down the middle here. It doesn't have to be exactly middle because it says four inches is where I'm at, the way my printer did it. But I'm just going to cut between the butterfly here and this flower. And I want to make sure I don't cut into my flower. I think I'm just going to cut right there. That's good. So it's not actually center of the page, but it's kind of like I just wanted to cut down through here. So they have the butterfly and flower on this side and then this flower over on this side. So this helps to determine the actual size of our other pieces. So I'm just gonna lay this here. We're gonna make little stripes. And so what we're gonna do, and then we're gonna, we're gonna make stripes with our paper, and then we are going to add some mixed media to make it all go together. So let's just see here. Um, so I'm going to need to cut three strips. Okay, so we're gonna cut, the first strip is going to be at one and a half. 
Let's start with cutting the one and a half, and then we'll see. We can always print out another one if we need more pieces. Actually, I should have made that just a little bigger because I wanted to overlap them this time. Instead of when I tore them, I didn't overlap them. Let's see, if I do this, I can still save this one. So then I just overlap. So I'm just gonna need a little bit bigger piece in the center and over to the side. So let's measure that again then. I'm going to need, still gonna need one, two. So let's go two and a half for the center and then we'll go from there and see. So I'm just looking at my paper. What do I want on the center here? So if I go two and a half, it's going to cut into this butterfly, isn't it? Actually, it may not. And then we'll do off the edge over here, I want to do the one and a half. I think I'll make it one and three quarters just in case, and then I can trim it down if I need to. I can always trim a little off the edge. It's hard to put more back on. Okay, so let's just lay some of this aside. So I just want to layer this up so that I have this layer. And then I think I'll just start gluing. Let's just see. So it is a little taller, but that's okay. I will trim it all off later. When we get everything evened up, then I'll trim it. I'll trim it down. So I'm just going to put a good layer of glue on this strip. And then I'm going to add it to the edge here. And let's see. There we go. I'm just going to let the bottom hang off. And then this strip, I want to take an overlap just a little. And since we have this box here, I am going to let it line up so that it doesn't look too wonky or off. I think the Fabri-Tac gives it a little bit longer to dry, and maybe that's why under these lights it doesn't, um, you know, cause the lines to be underneath it. And it may be that I'm not pressing down enough. I've wondered that too. So I just overlap those. And now I'm gonna come back in with the wider strip here. And I think I'll just overlap on that side and just overlap that way. Or should I pull this up and slide it up under there? I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna slide it up under this edge. And I'm just making this one as I go because like I said, the other one, I tore the edges and I just stuck those up against each other instead of overlapping them. But I thought for the straight edges, I wanted to try straight edges first off, but I also wanted to overlap them. And I'll show you why in just a second. I'll pull out the other one and show you why I decided I wanted to do that. So let's just get this lined up first though. Gotta get that slid up, I kinda missed the edge there. Okay, so for the other one when I did it, which is nothing wrong because, let me get some of this stuff moved around. There's nothing really wrong because I did decoupage it down, but you can see the edges there for each strip. You can see when it folds over. I don't know if you can see on camera or not, but you can see where it splits. And so I was a little concerned about that. So that's why I wanted to, um, I wanted to try it with the straight edges. They kind of mimic each other, as you see, as they go across, but I think that'll be okay. Once we add some of our um, inking to it and our stenciling, it should blend in. So I'm just gonna overlap this one on top of, so I'm really taking the colored ones and overlapping them on top of the sepia ones, if that makes sense. And notice how these words come together, flowers of the field. So I'm just gonna make sure they line up good together. And that's things you really don't have to worry about. It's just, it's just my brain and what I wanted to do. But you can make them however you want. But I thought these were beautiful digitals. And so I wanted to give them a try. And she, she had some from March that I wanted to use. And I may go back and use the March ones in a video. I don't know that each week I'll be able to show you a totally different designer. But I will try to show you a different project each week when we do our freebie share Saturdays. And hopefully we'll find new designers because I'm on the lookout for new freebies so I can show you new designers and even find new designers for myself as well. There are a lot of digital designers and the papers are just gorgeous.
Okay, so I have pulled out some of my um, acrylic paints and I've just pulled out some blues that I thought would go with the blues in this print. And then I've pulled out a, this was called khaki, and I think it'll go with the browns that's in the print as well. And then I've also pulled out some of my stencils. And my stencils are pretty rough, but um, I think I'm gonna use this little flower here, or this little, I'm not sure what you call it, just a little shape you got there. And then I'm going to use this one from Chow Bella, and it's just, um, just some vines and I think that's what I'm going to use on here and I may bring in some more in just a moment but let's just try a little bit at a time and see so what I want to do is I want to make the stenciling go across the lines where these connect and that kind of will make it all blend together as one piece hopefully it did with my other one we'll see how it turns out with this one today so I'm thinking first off I want to just come in with some of my khaki with the vines I'm gonna use the vines in khaki and then I'm going to do that little flower that I have, or the little, um, I'm not sure what you call it. It's just a little emblem, a little, um, hmm, can't think of the word. But I'm gonna use that in blue, I do believe. So let me, so what I'm doing is I'm just using a makeup sponge and I put some paint on my parchment paper. And then I'm just smearing my um, sponge around on there so that I don't have gobs in one spot. It's just very lightly on there because I don't want to, gob it up and um, leave texture on these. So that's all I'm doing. And I'm just gonna go in lightly and just rub some of these plants or these vines in on. And I'm going across the line. So I'm going over from one side to the other because that's what's gonna help this blend together. So I put some on this side of the line and this one as well. And that's just gonna bring everything together. So we're just gonna go back and get a little bit more paint and you want your sponge to be fairly dry when you do this. If not, you'll have gobs of paint showing through. Now, you could do this with, because um, I'm trying to keep this dry, kind of like if you were using an ink pad, because you could use your ink pads if you have some that are not water-based. So most of mine are water-based. So when on top of this, I want to go ahead and go through and decoupage on top because I want to um, make this so that it's all sealed in, but also when I decoupage it, it'll help hold the papers down, I think. So that's why I'm using acrylic paint is because if I add the decoupage on top of my inks, my um, either my Tim Holtz inks or any of my other inks, it will cause it to run because most of mine are water-based. I may need to add a little more there, but most of mine are water-based. And so, especially the ones with the colors that I wanted to use, so any of my navies are water-based, so they would just smear when I went to um, add the, the decoupage to it. So I'm just gonna put a few colors on here and see. I'm not sure if I want that dark one or not. I'm just gonna just come here and kind of, so I'm just smearing it in, but I'm trying to get it good and light on here because I don't want it to be too dark. And then we're gonna bring that flower in. I may be going a little too dark, let's hope not. So once again, I want it to go across from one edge to the other, so that way, and I'm just gonna lightly do this so I don't get it too dark, but that way it blends the two sides together. I got a little darker than I planned to, we'll see. So that goes there. And then we're just gonna put a little down here Just gonna have to add a little bit more. Kind of go in a circular motion. I think that blends it better into your sponge. Now, I may have got too dark on this one, but that's okay. I can go back and darken the other one or I can add a little white on top to lighten if I want to. So we have that and then we'll put one down in here. Just across over that line there. There we go. And I think I will darken this one up just a little. So I'm just gonna lay my stencil back on top, lining it up. Just get everything lined up there. And just darken it a little. With what's on my sponge. I'm not gonna add more to it yet. There we go. So I'm liking that. It's kind of mixing it around. Now I think I need a little bit more. I need to add a little bit more to it because here we don't have anything going across this line. 
So let me look and see, maybe a little bit of this design could go across the line. Just line that up. And let's put, bring in some light, lighter blue. This one's sky blue is what it says. Let's see what that looks like. See how that looks? See, it makes the paper start looking like it all is one piece, like it's all together. Especially when you cross over that line. Now, the way I'm doing this dry, it does make your makeup sponge roll off some, so you have to just be careful with that. And get some more light blue. It's kind of blending in with the dark that's on, on there, you can see. Um, let's put a little bit, try to decide down here where I want it. Maybe right in here. And we can cross our stenciling, like it can cross over the flower if we want to. It doesn't all have to be separate from each other. Let's see how that looks. Okay, and now I think I will come back in with a little bit of the brown down in here. So let's just go in. I don't want to cover up this flower a lot, but I do want some vines going through here just so we can blend all this. You can see this line here. I just want it all to kind of blend together. So I'm just going to lightly go in. Let's take a look. So that is a little thicker than I wanted, and I think I'm going to add a few more leaves onto it where... Down here, where you've got such a wide piece, it needs some more leaves to kind of finish the plant off. Oops. There we go. And so you see here, I don't really like how um, much is there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come back in with a little bit of white and just lighten that up some. So let's just take a little bit of white, just very little on our sponge. You can see here, I'm just getting a very little. And then we're just going to kind of sponge that on just to kind of lighten it up. I think that's gonna help it some. Nothing's permanent. We can just cover it up if we need to. Just put it back in the background. By adding the white, it just adds it back to the background so that it doesn't stand out so much. So I do feel like it needs something more. So hopefully I don't overdo it, but I'm gonna come back in with some of this decoration. I'm not sure which one yet. And just add a little bit of design in the background. And I've got to decide the color I want to. I think I just want to, um, I think I may just keep it khaki. Let's just try a little bit of khaki in the background. And then if it's too much, we can always lighten it. But I'm just gonna put just a little bit of brown on here, a little bit of khaki with this design. And I'm just following up the line where they cross, you know, that crosses over, but that way it's crossing over on both of them. I think I just want a little bit over here as well. Just going very lightly with this one. Then maybe just a little, I don't know that where else, I, I like to do things in three, so I have to have a third one somewhere, but I'm not really sure where I want it to now. And you could plan yours out a lot more than I do. I like just going with the flow and kind of just, just playing and seeing what I come up with. So I think that, what if, I know he's going to go in threes, but what if we put some at the top here? Just very lightly. And maybe, maybe a little bit of this one here, very lightly to cover up that white that we, that we had to add on here. Kind of gets those leaves back in the background. I kind of like that. That's a little busy, but I like it. I'm just going to ink the edges like this. Just go along the edge. And can you see that? I don't know if it's even showing up on camera. It's a very rainy day here. So I don't have a lot of natural light coming in. So hopefully you can see the paint. And I may have put too much there. That's okay, we'll just keep going. And so I'm just going to kind of add the paint to the edge here just to outline the envelope. Keep in mind, we're just playing. This is going to be, if you're making this one, especially your first one, you know, you could make these as gifts and put things in them, but especially your first one, you're making this for yourself 
as a sample. So just play around, see what you can come up with. You see, a lot of times I stress if I'm making something for somebody, but for myself, I'm not as stressed. So make your first ones for yourself so you can kind of give it a try and see. So I kind of like that. So I'm going to leave it to dry and then let's work on the back side now. So we're just gonna lay this one aside to dry. I'm not sure, but the other one, I didn't have these two flowers side by side. I'm not sure how much I like those flowers side by side, but that's okay. May come in with something else. I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna lay the side to dry and then we're gonna work on the back side. So for the back side, I wanted, you could do the exact same thing if you wanted to, but I wanted to do something a little different on my back, on the back side of mine. And it'll give you another example of how you could, you know, decorate yours up. So I'm just taking the piece, um, this was one of the landscape pieces, but I'm turning it the other direction so that it's tall enough to fit on my envelope. And then I'm just gonna tear it. And I'm tearing it at an angle. That way I could put one on this side and one on this side. So we're gonna add some white ink onto this to cover up the, the writing some. You'll still see the writing through it, but you won't see it, you know, clearly. And that way we don't have to worry about what wording is on here because I didn't go through the whole dictionary and see what words is in it. Surely it wasn't anything bad, but you know, some things might, you might not want on your folder. So I'm just gonna take some white paint and put it on an old jelly plate I have, an old jelly plate that I have that's been about destroyed. I've about destroyed this jelly plate, but it's one of the first ones I got. So then I'm just gonna take my roller and I'm just going to get some on here, but I think I've got way too much. So then we're just gonna come across. And so it just sort of covers up the wording, but you can still see some font through it, some letters through it, so that it can still have that look, the background of writing. Now, if you didn't have a roller, you could just come in with um, your paintbrush, a sponge like we were using before, a makeup sponge, anything like that. But I like using my roller for things like this because it does make it um, faster for me. And I kind of like just rolling it across there. I think, it's, I think it's a lot of fun to use. Now, you can see when you add the paint to this paper that it does wrinkle up. But what I found with mine was as it dried, it wasn't that bad. So it only took this a few minutes to dry. And while this was drying, I changed my mind about these pieces being this straight. So I tore them with my ruler. And I'm not as crazy about that. That's not the look I was going for. And last time I didn't tear them with the ruler. I was trying to figure out why it looks so different. So what I did was just tore it by hand last time. I got, I still got paint and glue on me. Um, so I just tore it by hand. So that's what I'm gonna do this time. I'm just going to tear it by hand so that it, it's more organic, more, um, I don't know, like it just kind of like it's torn open and it's opening up to these, to the words behind it, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna put that one there and then this one will go here. And I like that better. And so where it's torn, even though you got the white edges here, we can blend it in with some of our white paint. So I'm just gonna glue this down and then we will work on um, blending it all in. So I am gonna add glue to the edges here, but I'm also gonna come back. I'm not worrying about getting too much glue on the edges because I'm gonna come back and I am going to decoupage over all this, which will seal it all down and it's gonna seal the paint and everything that we do to it as well, the stenciling. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of the white and then we'll, then we'll spun, I mean, then we'll, we'll stencil over it. So I'm just gonna add some of the white here. Now on my other one, I use my finger, but since we are, um, since I'm on camera and I am trying to stay clean, I will try not to use my finger if I can get it to blend without using, if I can get it to blend using the sponge, but I do just come in with my finger and blend it over. And I may just have to do that. <laughs> I'm not as good with the sponge, I don't think, but I'm just blending the edges here, just coming and putting the white in on the digital as well, and kind of just getting it all blended down that it's where it meets with the paper. And you could use gesso for this as well. Gesso's good about when you're trying to blend the, um, when you're tearing edges and trying to blend onto a paper, gesso's real good to do that too. So, that's a little better. Um, now let's figure out which stencil we wanna add. I'm thinking that I'm gonna add this large one here. 
and maybe just have it going off the page some. I'm trying to decide where I want to put it. Let's just put a little bit right there. And I'm going to use khaki for this stencil. And I'll tell you the reason why. So this one kind of looks like, it makes me think of this doily here that's in the print. And since it's more of the khaki color, I'm trying to go with that. And that's why I am decided to use the khaki. Now on my other one, I used blue in that stencil. And that looked good too, because it brought out the blues here. And we will add some blues, but I'm just going to um, try the khaki first. And I want it to be very, very light. So I'm just gonna get a very light bit on my sponge. And I'm gonna have the flower going off the page some. So I'm just gonna lightly come in. And so this one I'm stenciling a little different. Instead of rubbing back and forth, I'm just patting this down. I think some of the blue that was still on the stencil is coming coming through with it, but that's okay. There we go. So we have that one there. And then we'll add one down here. I think I didn't go far enough over onto my, um, I didn't go far enough over onto my dictionary page. I'm more onto the digital than the dictionary page, but that's gonna be okay. I think that's gonna be okay. It's looking okay. And then we'll take and do one right in here. Let's see. This one's so big, it may be too, oops, I am making a huge mess now. Just like I said, I was trying not to make a mess. I am getting very messy. And every time I use paint and stuff, I do. But that's what I love about crafting. I like the messiness. It's just a lot of cleanup later. I don't like having to clean, but if you're gonna be messy, you're gonna have to clean it up, right? I think I'll just put it right in here. Hopefully they're not too close together. I had a little bit of extra paint on my sponge that time, so I may have to go back through. And I'm gonna use the back side of it to just kind of wipe some off. See, I'm just going in, taking some of that out before I pull the stencil off. Hopefully that'll help mute it down some. It dries fairly quickly though. So you can see with this one how much it was extra, so then you can see how it runs around the edges, whereas that one it didn't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come back in my white paint again, and we're just gonna kind of move it to the background some. I think that makes it look better. So now I'm just gonna come in with a little bit of this blue stencil here. I'm just gonna use the lighter blue, which our sponge has a little bit of the dark on it, so it's probably gonna bring some of that out, which is fine, because the darker is here and it'll help bring that out. And I'm just gonna use this little design I have here and just come in with a little bit of it. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh, that may be a little too light. Let's add a little bit of that dark blue to it. Kind of mix it together to get a lighter but darker color. Okay, let me see if I can get some off. I just want it to be pretty dry when I do this. But you do want it to show up some. Well, I'll add a little bit over here. And let's see how that looks. Okay, and then we'll just put some down here as well. And I know I get very quiet when I'm sponging. I didn't say hardly anything. Sorry about that. I just get very quiet and thinking about it all. And I feel like I'm staying too much in the same spot. So let's bring in, let's just bring in this stencil again that we used before. And I think we're just going to kind of add it in different spots. And I think I'm just gonna use the blue with it still. Just add a light bit of blue. And for this project, I don't need the stencil to have the entire image for this. I'm just wanting some of this texture in there, some of the shapes in there, I guess I should say, rather than the texture, but I'm wanting some of the shapes to come through, but not to overwhelm it. And so then we'll just add a little down here. Kind of 
kind of like it's in the background. Let's see how that looks. So it's just kind of lightly on there. Maybe a little down here. So there we go. Okay, so that's busy, but I think that's a lot of fun. And remember, this is just our storage envelope for our digital kits anyway. This is just having some fun here. So now let's just add some decoupage to the top, top of it, and then I'll come back. I'm just going to paint the decoupage on top like you would any other project. And then I'm going to come back, and I will show you the next steps. Okay, I thought I would show you while I am decoupaging that I cut out some of the labels, and I'm going to add them because it's bothered me that these two flowers are side by side like that. If it... But it just depends on how you tore your paper, if yours is or isn't. So, and you may like it. It may not bother you, but it's bothering me. So, I'm just going to put a label from the kit right there. And it's almost at the center, so I think that's cool. It says, Flowers of the Field. So, I'm just going to decoupage that down. And I don't know if I mentioned before, but I am using 32-pound premium paper. And I um, have a Amazon store where I can, I don't sell it. It's, I don't even know if it's called Amazon store. It's something like an Amazon store where I can show the products that I use. And so I will link that below. And that is my affiliate link. And if you use my affiliate link, then it does um, help me out a little bit. I, I'm supposed to get a little commission off of it. I've never really used it. I'm just... Um, I just found that it was an easy way to show you. I know a lot of people ask me, you know, what papers I use and different products that I use. And it's just an easy way for me to show you what I use because um, that is where I get my paper from, is from Amazon. And so instead of having to put a bunch of links below, I can just put the link to Amazon and you click on that and it'll take you to my store and then you can see what I use. So I'm just going to add another label here and I'm just going to fold it over and I'll glue the back side once my oops my decoupage glue clip dries and then I'm just going to add another one like up in here somewhere so let's just see maybe right in here because you can use your decoupage glue well you can use it as glue because it's decoupage glue but I'm just going to seal that down okay so now we're going to take the other piece that we started at the beginning that we were layering our pages up and we are going to create our flap for our envelope and so I haven't completed this flap yet. It is, um, I wanna go ahead and add a closure here. I had thought about a Velcro dot, but I think that what I'm gonna do is put an eyelet and then run a string through or a ribbon through. So let's make our flap. And I'm just going, I measured here, this one right here, oops, I'm off camera. This right here was about seven inches. So I think that's a good size for our flap. So I'm just going to fold up at that spot put a crease in it, and since it's too big for my paper trimmer, then I will um, just cut it with pair of scissors. I'm just gonna put my, put a little crease in it so I have a line to go by, somewhat of a line, so that I can kind of have a guide there. And so I'm just gonna trim it down, and then we'll trim it down on our paper trimmer to be the right, um, the right size to fit across the envelope. I'm just going to trim this off right here using the wording there to help guide me with my cutting. It probably will not be perfect, but that's okay. Flap. So let's just trim our flap down. So if you remember, our measurements were 13 and a half wide. So we're just going to trim this down to 13 and a half. And I'm just going to square up the edges first before I trim it down since I've got plenty of extra here. Well, I'm going to square up the sides, I should say. The other length is just too long right now. So I am just going to do, um, like I said, I saw Joey DeFee's video, and I saw how she trimmed the corners. I'm just going to do my corners the same exact way, just hold them together here, and then just trim. Just kind of get an idea here how I want them. So that looks good. So I am going to go ahead and add this paper. This is a, the paper from the um, freebie that we had. I'm just gonna decide where I want it on my flap. 
And then I'm gonna, I've gone ahead and cut some strips from some of the sepia tone sheets, and I'm just gonna come in and layer those underneath the paper as well. And I think that'll make a good flap. So I'm just gonna glue it on, and then I'll trim it out. Now for the flap, if you wanted to add some stenciling or anything you could, I'm not going to, I'm just keeping the flap simple. Now it has been overnight now, it's been a few hours. So it's morning, it's the next morning after I um, decoupaged this one and added the labels on and I was showing you how I did that. So everything is thoroughly dry now. And this is going to be the front of my envelope and this is going to be the back. So the flap will actually fold over this side of the envelope. So I may have to trim just a little off. It may have maybe just a little wide for it, but it will fold over like that. So what I want to do is first, I want to trim just a little bit. Oops, I gotta get back on camera. Did I, was I on camera when I showed you? It's gonna be like that. So what I wanna do is I want to just trim a little bit off the top here so that when we reach into our envelope, it's easier to reach into it and get things out. So I think I'll trim about, probably about an inch off. Okay, so this is our front and this is the back. And so now it makes more sense once I trimmed it off, you can see that we have, it's gonna be a little bit shorter so you can reach in your envelope. Now I did make my other one a little deeper than that, but I think this will be enough. So we're going to need to attach the, to, this is the front side of our envelope. So we're gonna to need to attach the flap to the front side of our envelope. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to attach it. Let me turn it over so you can see so a little bit better. So this is the front and this is our flap and you see our flap has to be upside down like that. And then we'll just glue it about an inch up from the, about an inch here. We'll have an inch here of glue to help hold that flap on. But I noticed that mine is a little too wide, so I'm just gonna have to go in and trim it off a little bit. I think I will do that after I glue it on. So I'm just gonna put just a wide little, about an inch wide of glue. I'm not measuring, it's just approximate. It may be more of three quarters. Whatever you wanna do, just so that it makes, you have enough glue to hold this little flap on. Now we are going to sew this, so that will hold it on as well. But I like to just get the glue here so it makes it easier for me to sew it because I can keep it exactly where I need it. And I wanna center that up on there so I can trim the edge off. Because since we've already cut these, you want to go ahead and, you want to go ahead and um, center it up because you want to have your, your little cuts here in the center. If you put it over to one side, they're not gonna be centered. I'm just gonna trim off a little right here. There we go. And then we'll just do the same thing on this side. I'm just gonna turn it over so I can do it. And there. So now we just wanna put a little crease in it. So that's what I'm gonna just put a little crease here, fold it where I want it. And there we have our flap. And so once we put it all together, we'll have it, it'll be like this. So you'll have, this is almost too big for my camera. So we'll have the envelope here, and then there's your flap, and you reach in there and put your um, projects. So this one is a little bit too wide too, but I'm going to take and trim it after I glue it on. That way I can make sure that I get it glued on and have enough room. So I'm just gonna add a little glue around the edges. Let me see which one I'm gonna trim off, which edge I'm gonna trim off. Okay. Then I'm gonna go along the bottom. And I'm just gonna tack it on that way. I'm not gonna glue the other side because I wanna trim that paper off. So if I put glue on it, I'm just gonna trim it off anyway. So I'm just going to not glue that part down. Not yet anyways. I think it's easier just to trim it once it's on here. It gives you a guide just to trim along the edge of your cover here. And that way you don't have to worry about getting it exactly right, cutting it away from it. So let's just do like that. And you can trim anything up. Like at the bottom here, I've got a little hanging over. If it bothers me, I could trim it up. But now we'll just add a little glue along this edge. 
just come back in here with just a little bit of glue because we're going to sew it. So we don't need a gob of glue. We don't need a you know ton of glue on there. I see a little spot here that I need to I miss trimming. There we go. So now we're just going to take it to the sewing machine. I'm going to once the glue's dry, I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch um, down the sides here and around. I'm also going to go around the flap and I'm going to come across the back here, stitching on where the, the flap and the envelope cover comes together. So now if you are nervous about sewing it or you're not great at sewing straight stitches, I did a straight stitch all around mine, but if you aren't great with straight stitches, you don't have to do that. You could come around with a straight stitch and then messy stitch it. Just stay, you know, don't go too far over in your envelope because you'll take up too much space of your, that you want to put your paper in here, but you could just do a messy stitch around it and that would look good as well. Now I am looking for my bone folder. If you find your bone folder, um, I have lost mine. I'm gonna, oh, here it is. It was where it was supposed to be. I thought it was on my desk somewhere. So just press down where we fold the flap over. Now remember, when you sewed it, we fold the flap just to get it folding, but when you sew it, you want to have your flap open, and that way, you know, I, what I did was I started up here, and I stitched around my flap and down the sides, get back up here now so you can see, across the bottom, and then I stitched back up the side, and then I connected up here at the top of the flap. Then I took it off the machine and I put it back on and I stitched just a really close here to this line where the flap is glued to the envelope. Now that, if you didn't cut your, um, if you didn't cut this down, then you would be in trouble because you'd be sewed it shut. So by having this shorter, you can do that. Now if you decide not to cut your shorter, you'll want to sew this flap on before you sew the back panel on and you'll want to sew yours a little differently. So now I really like it like this. So I'm just gonna add an eyelet here and then I'll find ribbon to tie through there. So for me, the easiest way to add eyelets is to use my Fiskars eyelet setter. I know a lot of people love their, um, let's see if I can lay this. They love their, what do you call it, crocodile. But for me, I can never get my eyelets to look good. The back side of them is always busted out when I do that. But with this um, eyelet setter, it seems to not do that because you can have a little bit more control and you can go go a little slower if you need to. And it doesn't, um, doesn't mess it up. Let me see here, I'm trying to find my eyelets. So which color do I want to use? Maybe the gold or, and these I just bought, um, I don't remember where I did get this pack from. I don't think they was in they were in the craft store. I think I just found these at one like one of the stores where my husband shops. The can't think of the name of it. it. Has tools and things there. I think I like that one. Or either one would look good. I'm gonna go with this one. So I'm just going to eyeball the center here. I'm not gonna be too worry about it too much. So with this one you take, and you have to be very careful that when you're pulling up on this, it's a spring, you don't wanna pinch your finger. If you do decide to get this one, you don't wanna pinch your finger. You have to be very gentle with it. So when you first get it, you know, don't um, go. When I first got mine, I was pulling it up too hard to set it, and I did pinch my finger. So, and I did actually pull one of these pieces off, but if you do, you can just screw it back together. But I was just being too rough on it. So I'm just gonna put the hole about right here trying to center it up as best I can. Now the only thing is these are a lot noisier than your crocodile. But for me, it's the easiest way for me to set. Also, if you're going to um, use this one, I just buy these little mats from the Dollar Tree because it does cut into them and you don't want to cut into your expensive mat. And I'm just going to set it here and then you just turn it over with this little knob there, you line it up in there, and then you just slowly go. I just slowly do it and take a look and see if it's bending it. It doesn't go as fast. But the good thing about it too is you don't have to, if you're, I have that finger I messed up last year, 
and so it's hard for me to squeeze things and so this one makes it easier too. I don't have to squeeze it so you can see you just keep checking it and there we have it so it um it's a lot nicer you can see here it doesn't split out let me see if I can hold it up it doesn't split out like like the, some of the other, the other ones with the crocodile. So that's what I like, because I just can't get mine to not split out with the crocodile. So, and it was driving me crazy that they split, so that's why I like this a lot better. So I think I'm gonna tie this one shut with some jute. So you could use ribbon, you could use, um, I guess you could even use lace if you wanted to, or any type of string. But I'm just gonna use the jute for this one. And then we'll just, Pull it through here. I've got a lot of extra here because I didn't, because um, when I add stuff to this, it's gonna be a lot thicker. And so I don't want to cut it too short because then I won't have room to wrap this around. But it may be a bit, a bit too long right now, but that's okay. And there's different ways you can tie it. You can tie on the top like that. I think you could come down and tie it underneath too. So this is our completed envelope. I really love how it turned out. And so, I hope that you have enjoyed this freebie share Saturday if you made it this far. I know this video was super long, but this project does take a little bit longer. And even though you're seeing this in a 45 minute video or so, it will not take you just 45 minutes to do it. I have cut some parts out and I've tried to show you how to make it completely, but by shortening the time a little bit, even though it's a very long video, it seems like I haven't cut anything out, but I have. And also you do want to give it some drying time. You don't want to take it to your sewing machine when the decoupage is still wet or your ink is still wet or anything's still wet, your glue's still wet. So give it time to dry. Take a, you know, set it aside, work on another project while it dries. But um, it only took me yesterday evening and then this morning to do this. And it didn't take, you know, an extreme amount of time, but I don't want you to think that if yours does not get completed in 30 minutes or so like the video, that, or 30 to 45 minutes like the video, that something's wrong. No, it just takes that. And just enjoy the process. Don't rush through it. But sometimes I like to do longer projects like this, especially if it's something that's going to hopefully help me out with storage. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed this. And let me know below, are you enjoying the Freebie Share Saturdays? Have you tried any of the projects on the Freebie Share Saturdays yet? And I'll try to make a playlist for those because I've got several out now. And um, but let me know if you're downloading the freebies and if you do like these. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.